There is a celebration at the University of Alberta this week. It's been 25 years since research there changed the lives of hundreds of people with type 1 diabetes around the world. Now, our city continues to be a leader in the field, and joining us this morning is Dr. Peter Senior, who is the director of the Alberta Diabetes Institute. Good morning, Dr. Senior. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, chatting with us. Really interesting topic here. The Edmonton Protocol uh, was groundbreaking. Can you explain how it works? I guess the idea is that in diabetes, type 1 diabetes, people have to take insulin injections multiple times a day, every single day. If you can take the cells which make insulin from a donor and give them to a person with diabetes, potentially the cells then make the insulin at the right amount when you need it, potentially freeing people from the need to take insulin injections. So again, a life transforming treatment. Absolutely. Now, what did this mean for type 1 research over the past 25 years here? Yeah, I mean, it, it certainly was built on work that had been done for decades before. So whenever you have good news, it's not an overnight success. But it then was a platform that really spurred Edmonton as being a destination for researchers to come to work, to study, to learn more about it. And so we have continued to grow as a leading centre for diabetes research internationally. Now, where are we at now in combating this disease and helping those who are diagnosed? So for type 1 diabetes, again, there's a greater understanding of how the immune system causes it in the first place, and there's work looking to see if we can reverse that or prevent that before it begins. Islet transplantation was only ever going to be a treatment for a small number of people because we need organ donors. That's always a small number, unfortunately. Uh, and there's also a need for anti-rejection drugs, which again has potentially side effects. But I think where research is going is that we're now seeing products come that we have an unlimited source of cells. And if you have an unlimited source of cells, it really opens the door for treating more people with type 1 diabetes to again hopefully prevent some of the long-term complications that can arise. Now, when people are uh, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and, and they refer to you, what are some of the first questions that come up? So I think the first question is, why did this happen? Why me? Why now? What did I do wrong? And I think providing reassurance that it wasn't their fault, it's not something that they did wrong that caused it, is important. And then also, I guess, just to explain to people that, you know, this is a condition that they will have to live with, but that they can live with it and do all the things that they want to do. And of course, as you are as, uh, an expert in the field, what does the future look like now? I think we're at a very exciting point. Insulin was discovered just over 100 years ago. Before that, it was a fatal disease. But for many years, the progress has seemed a bit slow. We've been tweaking around the edges, making the insulin a bit better or the device a bit better. But I think where we are going at the moment is that we have continuous glucose monitoring that could be linked with a pump to automate insulin delivery. That's transformed a lot of lives. Cell therapies are, I think, knocking on the door that could be a treatment that could really mean that people didn't have diabetes anymore. And that's, I think, what we're really searching for. Well, Dr. Senior, thank you so much for your time this morning and for helping so many people. Uh, on Wednesday, the public is invited to the U of A to celebrate the Islet milestone. And Thursday, healthcare professionals and researchers are invited to attend sessions about the future of diabetes research.